I live in a beautiful neighborhood. And last year, Larry moved into town and said, Kathy, you want to do honeybees? I said, sure. I was amazed and shocked when I found my first packages of bees. I took them out of a truck. They arrived last year, and I held them to my chest and my heart, and I said, wow, I was in shock. It was so awesome. And they were flying all around me, and I wasn't getting stung, and I was just holding them to my heart, and there he goes, you gotta put them in the hive. I'm like, no, I'm gonna stand here. <laughs> How's that? It was the most amazing thing. Bees are so amazing. Hi, my name is Larry Connor. Uh, and here are the packages that uh, the bees were shipped in. Three pounds of bees in one of these boxes. And here's the cage the queen was in. And that's simply stapled on there. There's a can that fits here of sugar syrup and a piece of uh, heavy, uh, uh, like a Luan type of uh, plywood. And then these are shipped. The truck that came up had about 500 of these. Just what commercial beekeepers, they are manufacturers. And I understand the, the importance of the pollination, but if enough local beekeepers like us get together, that issue's over. Except I will not work with monoculture, the big, not, is it the monoculture, the big crops? Okay, I won't work with that. People have already called me farmer friends and they want their alfalfa fields bees on them and I'm like using chemicals they go yes I'm like nope nope can't have my bees the farmers around here have been working with us they went from uh, roundup ready crops back to wheat and oats which they can save their own seeds and they don't have to use a lot of chemicals and they're they've just overnight been more than willing to get out of that system too that they weren't making any money on and three farmers in the whole area own most of the acreage in the whole area so it's easy to control now we're working on the local neighbors that use lawn chemicals. Bad. Ultimately, I'd like to see our stock going into nukes in the winter, in the fall, overwintering nukes, these five frame boxes, and being able to sell them in the spring. Get a premium price, but they'd be localized bees, and they'd be tested too, which I think would be great. Okay. And then I'm hoping this is successful, that we can raise local queens. And it's the whole movement of the queen industry, or the bee industry, is to raise local queens for your local area and they don't travel. They stay. You know, we've got to offset the commercial beekeepers' destruction of the industry. Thank you. Beekeepers have a couple of things that they use to work with, and the requisite in my world, three things a hive tool and a smoker. This is an old smoker that dates back a number of years. And the whole concept of a smoker is a, it's a little fire pot here and we start a fire, so we've been burning uh, sumac bobs. And we get a fire going in there and that white smoke, uh, which is hopefully a cool smoke, if there can be such a thing, uh, you don't want to blast them with hot uh, fire. And what that does is it interferes with their communication system. And the smoke also stimulates the bees to fill their stomachs with honey. And so you've got a, uh, a means of controlling the bees. The hive tool inside the hive, it's uh, basically a specialized pry bar that you can use to get equipment out. And there are all sorts of ways of using this. The uh, the third item that people use on a regular basis is a bee veil and take off my geek hat and put on my veil. This is a very simple veil. It is really just a, a, a hood. You can tie this around you if you're going to do any serious bee work. Uh, I just tuck it in and, and work this way. But there are several different versions. There are jackets with the veil attached and there are whole bee suits. And there are bee gloves that you can, you can buy. I don't use bee gloves, but most new beekeepers like them because it gives them a sense of confidence. Green mark means that she's last year's queen.
What we have here is a beehive. This is a uh, fairly standard setup, although this is an eight frame hive. I'll we'll show you a difference in just a minute. We have a telescoping cover, and normally we have an inner cover that goes here. But inside the box, or hive body, we have these frames. These frames are uh, wood. This particular one is wood and wax. And this is called a frame. And so we have a wooden um, structure. And I don't know, this has got a plastic foundation. And how can I tell? I'm just snooping here. You can actually see some of the wax, the, uh, the plastic in the corner there. The advantage of the plastic, it's a lot easier to put together. I don't see a tremendous deal of uh, variation in the bees' uh, ability to draw it out. This is a black plastic that's coated with, with um, beeswax. And so this brown and white are different times when they've added wax onto it. See, there's nothing on that side. Here's an older comb from last year. Okay, this area right here is the old honey from last year, probably. And this could be old or new. This is newer honey here. But in the very center right here, the bees have cleaned out the honey and they put eggs in there. The queen has put eggs in there. The queen does what the workers tell her. Now, talking about the smoke, I just want you to notice the number of bees that are taking a drink of honey. So, if nothing else, smoking the bees distracts them, gives them something else to think about. Set up bees, new colonies. We add these two colonies as we work the, uh, throughout the year. And most beekeepers find that they need two or three of these deep boxes their first year or three or four of a, a shorter depth, a medium depth uh, hive in their first season. Below that, we've got a, a screen bottom board, which I really think people use, should use a screen bottom board. It has a tray in it. And this does two things. It allows uh, ventilation for the bees. And the tray then lets us look at the debris that falls out of the hive. And it's also a method we use to control varroa mites. For comparison, the eight frame hive, we have that set up right here. And here is a 10 frame box, which is, as you, you can see, just 20% bigger. Uh, why do people want the smaller hive when this is filled with honey? This can weigh 80, 90 pounds. So by taking 20% of the weight off, the eight frame hive seems to be a little bit easier for people to work and, and manipulate. The other item I have here is a uh, division board feeder. So we take out one of these frames and we put in this plastic feeder. It's serrated on the side so the bees can crawl out. Not all of them are serrated. And we do this, we feed the bees in the spring and the fall when there's no natural food coming in. That's one of the bee beekeepers' biggest jobs is feeding bees to make sure that they stay uh, well-fed and healthy. And this is, we, we put in a uh, mixture of sugar and water. In the, in the spring, we use about a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar to water by weight. And then in the fall, we do a two to one ratio because we want the bees to store that syrup in the comb and have that available to them. I took this out without showing. This is the, the feeder we use. They, they were fed a couple of times. This is a cool feeder in that it has a, a plastic ladder the bees can climb up and down on. So they're not likely to drown. Look what Michelle Obama did just by putting a hive at the White House. She just woke up a million people that way. Uh, there's a hive at the White House. They have the FBI's in charge of the hive, <laughs> Homeland Security. It's a Homeland Security hive. And Larry's friends take care of the hive, so we get reports under the table about it, and they're doing wonderful. Their new dog kept bothering the hive, so they had to raise it up onto a big platform. It's in the Bee Culture magazine, they're following it and they are bottling the uh, honey and giving it away as foreign gifts and very expensive Tiffany bottles as far as I know.
good. Yeah. Eyes are in focus. My eyes are in focus. That's that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I got Alec going. More beer. I haven't had any beer for two days. Knock it off, guys. <laughs>